In 2015, we made a lot of progress in the monitor department of technology. We got a 144Hz IPS 1440p display, which I picked up straight away. We then later got a 100Hz 21x9 1440p IPS display. I would have picked that one up too if it wasn't for the price. The Acer X34 was seen as a king of all gaming and editing monitors with its vastly superior 100Hz refresh rate and an IPS display and G-Sync technology. However, this monitor costed over a grand and I just couldn't afford it. I wish to all the heavens there would be something for me at a reasonable price with similar specs. As of now, the gods seem to have smiled down on me because that's exactly what has come. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the Microboard M340 COZ. Greetings everyone, my name's Dom and today I have lost my 21x9 virginity. That's right, I went ahead and bought myself this monitor, the Microboard M340 CLZ. Before I start the video however, I want to refer you guys to this chapter system. This video is going to be pretty long, so if you fancy skipping to a certain bit, then click the relevant chapter on screen now and it'll take you right there. However, if you're amazing and you want to watch it all the way through, then sit back and relax because this shit is about to go down. This monitor came to me all the way from Korea, and I will add that I bought this with my own money, it was not sent out to me. Now, I'm going to be reviewing this monitor to show you guys just how big of a deal it really is. And because it came all the way from Korea, some people are very skeptical about picking it up, and I understand why. It's being shipped a long way overseas, the price seems too good to be true, and what's more, you have to buy it on eBay. However, I'm going to be putting your restless thoughts to rest as I explain my whole experience in buying the monitor. And let's start from the beginning from when I first ordered it. I bought it from an account called Dream Seller. This is a highly established seller on eBay with thousands of good reviews. Furthermore, the seller was also the one to supply Logan's monitor from Crit TV. So don't worry about it being a scam. The seller is legit and if you have any questions, then from my experience, Dream Seller responds within a few hours, providing detailed answers to any questions you have. I can also put the fears of 40 panels to rest, as when I unboxed and powered on mine, I can successfully say that there were no dead pixels or backlight bleed. The monitor is also a native 100Hz. As for shipping expenses, I live in the UK and as part of the Black Friday deals I was able to get this monitor with free shipping so I didn't have to pay any extra for customs charges. Although if you live near where I am, I can tell you that there was a man who got this monitor delivered to Northern Ireland and that only costed him 50 euros, so not too bad. As for return policies, they accept up to 3 dead pixels before they'll issue you a refund, and you must also provide evidence of the issue at fault. They do not accept backlight bleeding as part of a fault with the monitor, although I wouldn't worry about this as my monitor practically has none at all. My Acer one has more than this, and my Acer monitor is fucking good for backlight bleeding. They managed to achieve this by spacing out the bezel from the screen. I must add that this monitor is not very colour accurate at all. I'm not sure if it was just mine when comparing it to my IPS monitor, but it just looks so washed out and unimpressive. After about an hour of calibrating and comparing it to my IPS again, to get it accurate, I could finally use it for editing, but I do recommend you calibrate the monitor upon receiving it. Finally, I will say that the monitor upon arrival had no damage done to it or the packaging whatsoever. It was not shipped across the sea, but was imported via a plane, which is why it arrived within a matter of days. This was my experience on a technical level, but now let's get into the specs. The Microboard M340 CLZ really does punch above its weight. This 34 inch monitor has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio with a resolution of 3440 by 1440. The refresh rate of this monitor is a native, yes, native 100Hz, and I was able to overclock this monitor to a further 117Hz, and as you can see, it is stable. 120Hz was possible, but flickering sometimes occurred, so dialing it back solved that. This monitor has a 10-bit, 2-bit for dithering, Samsung VA panel with a 5000 to 1 contrast ratio, making this delight when it comes to colours. It does need a bit of tinkering to get it colour accurate though. It has an 8 millisecond response time, which can be reduced down to 4 milliseconds using this turbo feature built into the monitor. This makes ghosting almost non-existent. FreeSync also comes equipped on this display, so if you're rocking an AMD card then you're good to go. But for those like me on Nvidia hardware, I wouldn't fret too much. Nvidia now has fast sync support and you don't need a fancy monitor to use it. Like VSync, it's a software technology. Just turn it on in the Nvidia control panel and you've got yourself a great alternative to G-Sync. 
Perhaps the most striking thing about this monitor though is the 1800R curve and oh boy does it look sexy. Despite it being a glossy panel so colours really do pop, I haven't at all noticed any glare or distracting reflections when using the monitor, even on a black screen. I have a window right behind me and I just don't notice any at all. The monitor has a really nice metal frame which covers the front bottom bezel and all around the sides. A glossy white back and finally a solid metal stand to secure it in place. The stand is small so it doesn't take up much desk space and the glossy back is a welcome design for those of us who like to use LEDs. Fingerprints aren't at all noticeable on this monitor, so it doesn't look tacky, which is good. The build quality is fantastic, and it looks like a monitor far more expensive than what it actually costs. Another good thing about this monitor. Finally, the M340 has a HDMI port, a DisplayPort 1.2, and finally a DVI port. So you can hook up a console, your PC, and even a second PC all to the same monitor. To vase mount this, you'll need some spacers and also some slimmer screws. But before I get deeper into the review, I want to tell you guys about the Trite Benefit System. This is my way of giving back to the community for being awesome, by giving away a free game of your choice. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, receive notifications, like the video, and then finally comment down below the indicating word in the most creative way you can. Once you do that, and I see you are subscribed, I will enter you into the giveaway. Around the 10th of each month, I will reveal who won, and after the winner has emailed me, I'll send over that code for their chosen game. Speaking of which, today's indicating word is flamboyant. Last video we got hundreds of fantastic creative comments using the word banana. Let's see if we can top that in this video with the word flamboyant. Go wild and let's see what you can come up with. By the way, you can win more entries by sharing my videos, giving feedback on my channel or videos, or sticking with the channel, commenting on each video and telling me your thoughts. Good luck to the winner, but let's continue with the video. The Microboard M340 CLZ is a 21 by 9 monitor at heart. This makes it very useful for a number of things. But how does it fare with editing and work tasks? Well, I can safely say that with this monitor, I have reached my peak in terms of efficiency. I can multitask like never before, and although this commonly d means doing college work while watching a video, it is also insanely useful for editing. If you so desire, you can have two thirds of your page taken up by Premiere, and the other one third for searching up music on the internet, responding to comments, or browsing your files for content. If you prefer to use the whole monitor for Premiere, like I do, then you'll find yourself completing your edits in a much smoother fashion compared to a regular 16x9 monitor. This is because the resolution allows for multiple windows to be utilised along the top, while the whole timeline can be taken up at the bottom. This means that you no longer have to keep switching between tabs or pages to find what you're looking for. You can have it all there, right in front of you, which increases your workflow substantially. As for the curve while editing, I personally don't mind them, but scan lines can be an issue for some people, especially with an aggressive curve such as this one. To remedy this, I suggest you either tilt the monitor or you compensate for the bends with a monitor arm so you can better position it around you. Although the monitor doesn't natively support vase mounting options, there are screw holes for 100x100 vase mounts. It just requires some slightly slimmer screws and some spacers to make it work. I'll have a tutorial on how to vase mount this soon, but for now I think I'll just link the appropriate screws and spacers in the description. If you're not an editor, then you may also find this monitor useful for common work tasks. I find doing my college work on this monitor is swifter than ever before. I can be typing up an essay while listening to Spotify and reading off my research notes all on the same screen. The 3440x1440 resolution paired with the 21x9 aspect ratio and 34 inch monitor size come together to form a trifecta of joint multitasking power. You will get no greater joy and immersion from any other monitor than this one. Doing Excel spreadsheets with the curve will make you feel like you're an avatar sitting in one of those little cubicles that spins around and stuff. But I must remind you to calibrate this monitor when getting it, as it can be fairly distracting for someone coming from an IPS display. So you get it, it's great for work, but how is it for gaming for fuck's sake? 21 by 9 gaming is all it's cracked up to be. All the hype that excited me for this monitor is perfectly justified when you jump into a visually stunning game such as The Witcher 3. You get this enormous sinking feeling in your stomach. I felt so overwhelmed by how immersed I was in my gaming experience that I felt I had to switch over to my 16x9 monitor and see if I was acting under a placebo. My 16x9 monitor is one of the best 16x9 examples anyone could give for a monitor. It, like the microboard, is 1440p. It's got a 144Hz refresh rate, an IPS display and it's rockin' G-Sync on that baby. And I can tell you now, it's no placebo. It's no lie that games feel much smoother and more responsive on my 16x9 monitor due to the higher refresh rate and lower input latency. But in terms of enjoyability, there's a fucking monopoly going here on my desk. The curve wraps the game around your peripheral vision and you feel so engrossed into what you're playing. You pay much more attention to individual details on screen. You can see a lot more in your field of vision which gives you an edge in competitive games like Battlefield or CSGO. 
Despite the stigma that surrounds Assassin's Creed, playing titles in 21x9 is beautiful and sometimes even breathtaking when you're looking out at some of the sights you can see in the worlds Ubisoft has created for us. I can't say anything on the FreeSync technology in the display as I don't have an AMD GPU on hand, but it is present and you know what it does by now anyway. The refresh rate of this monitor means you can still play games without sacrificing too much of a competitive edge. Whenever I play CSGO, I'll always still play my high refresh rate monitor, but for other games this resolution and experience at a high refresh rate is stunning, especially with the VA panel once calibrated, as the blacks are very appealing. If you're looking for the ultimate gaming experience, then you've definitely found it. But I feel there will soon be an appeal for 21x9 streamers. The monitor features this technology where you can have this picture by picture thing going on, now I don't have anything else to demonstrate this, so I'll refer you to Crit TV's review on the monitor, but you can have your console or gaming PC on one half of the monitor and your streaming PC on the other, without it feeling too cramped at all. This revolutionises the ease of use and access for streamers who are either starting out or who have a single monitor display due to certain constraints. Obviously you can use this for other uses like gaming on your console through HDMI and watching a video on your PC through DisplayPort, but I feel this is most important to streamers. Sorry, there was one major thing that I forgot to mention after reading through the script. The biggest and most annoying difference between 1080p and 1440p 21x9 monitors is likely the refresh rate. If you have a 3440x1440 monitor, you can't have that silky smooth 144Hz refresh rate that a lot of the higher end gaming branded monitors do support. The max reaches up to 100 unfortunately. However, this monitor has a trick up its sleeve. Yes, you can run games at 1440p 100Hz, but you can also choose to run games at 144Hz if you lower the resolution down to 1080p. I'm not sure if there's an upscaling engine in this monitor, but the results look just as good as a native 2560x1080 image while wreaking all of the benefits such as a much higher refresh rate, higher FPS and therefore higher level of responsiveness. In fact, you can even take it up a notch by overclocking this refresh rate at this resolution. And oh boy, do we get some very impressive results. Jumping into NVIDIA control panel, we can overclock this monitor all the way up to 180Hz. However, there is some strange artifacting that happens if you use this as a desktop resolution for some reason, so either only use 2560x1080 in games to get that 180Hz refresh rate, or dial it back to 170Hz, which is what I did to remove the artifacts. As you can see, it is stable. This even tops out the highest end 16x9 monitors, and all while still offering that beautiful 21x9 aspect ratio with all the positives it brings. I cannot stress enough how good this feature is for this monitor, but let's move on. The 21x9 aspect ratio isn't just for gamers though. Almost all films are made in 21x9, and I sure have kept a library of them to watch when I finally got my 21x9 monitor. The size and type of the panel make viewing experiences something to truly remember. The VA panel boasts some very rich blacks indeed, which means that when watching movies in the dark with a dark background in play, colours really do pop. And because the film occupies the entirety of the screen with no black bars, like games you really do feel immersed when watching movies. The black levels are so good on this monitor that it feels reminiscent of Samsung's OLED technology, which is featured on their higher end TVs. Funny coincidence, the panel in this monitor is in fact a Samsung VA panel. I have a feeling this is probably why. 21x9 video is not just enjoyed in films, there is also a great deal of 21x9 content to absorb on YouTube, with some channels even dedicated to it. However, this doesn't mean 21x9 content is common to find in your average YouTuber. What I plan to do in future is to upload two versions of my videos, one version in 21x9 1440p and the other in 16x9 4k. That being said, there are a number of issues with video, among other things, at this aspect ratio. Because the vast majority of content is 16x9 on YouTube when watching on the M340, there are black bars either side of the video. I don't mind this too much as I have a 16x9 monitor right next to me, and don't usually watch videos full screen anyway, but for those running on a single display this can be fairly annoying, as are a great deal of other things to do with this monitor. And that leads us on to our negatives. One of the biggest gripes I've had with this monitor is the OSD navigation. The physical buttons on the monitor are so bad it makes me want to fucking cry. Buttons are supposed to like being pressed, not cut your finger if you try. They're made from this sharp, hard plastic, which, after trying to calibrate your monitor, really does make your fingers sore. Not only that, but you have no indication as to what the buttons even do. They are labelled just on the underside of the monitor, where you can't fucking see them. This could be so easily remedied using a joystick like ASUS and LG monitors do, one button for power functions, a joystick and perhaps a back button. That is all that's needed. It's just such a shame because the rest of the build quality and design of this monitor is so good. It looks beautiful and stunning, but I feel like the navigation buttons just let it down a bit. 
Another design flaw with this monitor is the stand. Despite being easy to assemble and of good build quality, it offers no rotate, pivot or height adjustment which doesn't particularly help those who have gripes with scan lines. Another negative to having the monitor's curve. The biggest negatives, however, aren't with the monitor itself but with the aspect ratio. There are many games that support the aspect ratio natively, and support grows wider and wider with each passing game release. However, games like Overwatch don't support 21x9 due to its unfair advantage over the majority of gamers who play at 16x9. Personally, I find their reasoning stupid. If they want everyone to be equal, then they shouldn't have made it for PC. But even so, that game has black bars either side stopping you from wreaking the benefits and immersion of the aspect ratio. Some games, although they support the aspect ratio, may not support it very well. Fallout 4 is an example where the HUD just gets too stretched out, making everything seem a little weird. If there are any games that don't have the best support for it, then there's usually some simple fix or INI tweak or mod that you can do to get it working. But to some, that's just more hassle. Finally, the most annoying thing about the resolution is the performance loss. 3440 by 1440 is nearly as hard to run as 4K, so in a lot of games running 21 by 9 1440p is a lot harder than 16 by 9 1440p. You can definitely feel the difference, and it's really making me consider getting back my GTX 1080. If you want to know why I downgraded, by the way, the link will be in the description. Even though the cons are many, it does not outweigh the positives. Before we end today's video, I'm going to touch up on a few things I really do appreciate with the Switch I've made. Straight off the bat, I appreciate the fact that Microboard hasn't gone with the sharp-edged gamery aesthetic with this monitor. It's very minimalistic, colour neutral and very well designed. The FreeSync range of 42 to 100Hz is large enough to accommodate for current AMD hardware, although Vega is right around the corner, so finally AMD users will be able to test FreeSync at the higher frame rates. The monitor also comes with a pair of stereo speakers, although they're pretty tinny. Obviously, I don't expect people to be using these as dedicated audio, but in certain situations, it's nice to have. The difference between a dedicated set and the monitor set is astronomical. But again, it's a nice addition. Alongside the lack of backlight bleed, pixel defects and physical damage, the monitor also doesn't have any coil wine. Everything about this monitor, from the I.O. to the specs, has been done perfectly. But one thing that I find a problem with believing, despite having the monitor in my possession right now, is how it was able to be so cheap. Let's compare the microboard M340 CLZ to the Acer X34. The M340 has a native 100Hz refresh rate, which the Acer X34 doesn't. The X34 has a native 60Hz refresh rate which can be overclocked to 100Hz and no more. The M340 can overclock to 110Hz easily, mine making it up to nearly 120Hz stable. The M340 has FreeSync and the X34 has G-Sync. Both monitors have a 3440x1440 resolution and both are 34 inches in size. The M340 is a 10-bit panel with 2 bits for dithering, whereas the X34 is just an 8-bit panel. The X34 is an IPS display, and although the M340 is a VA display, it can still give some good results with colour accuracy and black levels in comparison. Both have a 4 millisecond response time, both have roughly the same input latency, and the M340 has a more aggressive curve. This can be positive or negative, depending on who it affects. So the only notable differences between the two are the fact that the M340 is VA instead of IPS, and the fact that it's free sync instead of G-Sync. However, you do get a higher refresh rate and a better curve. You get those features for spending over £600 less. For the price of the X34, you can get two of these microboard monitors. Or, alternatively, if you're annoyed about it not being IPS and G-Sync for the same money, you can buy a microboard and buy an Acer XB270HU, which is my other monitor. That monitor has G-Sync, IPS, and has a 144Hz refresh rate, insanely low input latency, and finally a 1440p 16x9 resolution. For one X34, you could buy these two monitors and use them in conjunction with each other, which in my experience is fucking sick. So we near the end of our massively long review, which has been really fucking hard to record, I'm not gonna lie. I've had a lot to say about this monitor, and there are more videos to come on this monitor and also on 21x9. However, before I go, I do want to say that, yes, I do wholeheartedly recommend this monitor. As stated before, calibrate it and you'll be good to go. The monitor is insanely good value for money, and right now, especially considering the price and the giants it's going up against, there is no reason you shouldn't be picking up this monitor immediately. It's good for so many things with few negatives. If you're a gamer, this monitor is for you. If you're a streamer, this monitor is definitely for you. And if you're an editor, this monitor is for you. As long as you calibrate it, that is. But anyway guys, thanks so much for watching, do remember to subscribe and enter the giveaway to win that free game of your choice. I want them to be as creative and as funny as you can make them. If you did enjoy this video, then do show your appreciation by tapping the like button. I love your face and I'll see you guys in the next one. Terra.